Hey guys, hope everybody's doing okay. What I want to do today is introduce something called a limiting reagent or a limiting reactant. This is the first part of our lesson on these, and it's going to focus on the conceptual understanding of what limiting reagents are. Um, in order to understand limiting reagents a little bit better, before we get into the stoichiometry behind it, I want you to focus on the s'more in front of you on the screen here. So when you make a s'more, there's typically a standard formula that you follow when you, when you, when you make those. And I know some of you might go rogue and have your own special formula uh, with extra chocolate or marshmallows or whatever. Um, but we're going to focus on just a standard s'more today for the sake of today's lesson. And we're going to see how that ties into stoichiometry and how we actually make these things. So let's write an equation for showing the formation of a s'more. So on the note sheet that you guys have, the first question asks you to do that. And I'm going to help you out by writing the formula for it here. And we're going to focus on this as we answer a couple questions about it. So when you make a s'more, uh, typically we're going to have two graham crackers. So we have our two. And we have graham cracker is, of course, GC, obviously. That's our elemental symbol for graham cracker. We have our one piece of chocolate. Clearly, that is C, all right? And we have our one marshmallow. It's a plus sign. And clearly, the elemental symbol for marshmallow is MM, all right? What we're going to do then is combine all those elements, right? And we're going to create a, a s'more, a compound. So it's going to be GC2CMM, okay? Looks kind of ridiculous, but... This looks like a one big synthesis reaction, right? Where we're taking all of our elements and combining them into a compound with some chemical bond in between them. So we could even add, look at us being, look at us being official here. We're going to add a delta H, okay, above our yield sign, because of course we're going to add heat in order for this reaction to occur. So an endothermic process to make this reaction. So the first question says, how many s'mores can be made with 16 graham crackers? Um, so think about what you can do with. 16 graham crackers, how many s'mores you can make, and we should end up with an answer of 8, right? If it takes 2 graham crackers to make 1 s'more, and we have 16 graham crackers, of course that's 8. Next question says, how many s'mores can be made with 1 marshmallow? Well, in our chemical equation, we need 1 marshmallow per s'more, so it looks like we're at 1. And then the last question in this first series here, how many graham crackers would you need if eight pieces of chocolate are to be used up. All right, so I want to use up eight pieces of chocolate. How many graham crackers would I need? If you look at your chemical equation up here, and you probably know it without looking, but look at your chemical equation. For every one piece of chocolate, you need two graham crackers. So if we have eight pieces of chocolate, we're going to need 16 graham crackers. All right, so there's an assumption that we made here with the first two questions here, where it says how many s'mores can be made with 16 graham crackers and how many s'mores can be made with one marshmallow. The assumption here for those is that we had enough of all the other ingredients. Okay, some of you may have thought for that first question right here, you may have said, well, I don't think we can make, <clears throat> I don't think we can make any, any s'mores because I don't have other stuff. It says I just have 16 graham crackers. It'd be the worst s'more ever, right? So you might say zero. Or we can make, like when I said eight as my answer, the assumption was I had enough of everything else. Same thing here with the one marshmallow, all right? If I have um, one marshmallow, I'm assuming I have, you know, at least two graham crackers and one piece of chocolate to make a s'more. That's how I got the number one there. So a lot of the stoichiometry problems we've done so far have only given us one reactant out of um, maybe multiple reactants. And since it only gave us that one reactant, we're under the assumption that all the other reactants that weren't mentioned in the problem were there in excess. Okay, so that's the assumption we're making here, but that's not always true. We don't always have excess ingredients. And a great example of that is right here for the last example on, on this slide. So write an equation to show that um, show what would happen if you made s'mores had 16 graham crackers, nine marshmallows, <clears throat> and 11 pieces of chocolate. So let's go ahead and actually write um, these as part of our chemical formula. Okay, so we have 16 graham crackers. I'm going to put it in the order of the one above. We had 11 pieces of chocolate and nine marshmallows. Clearly, I have my symbol wrong here. I didn't memorize my elements properly. Look at me. All right, we're going to create how many s'mores from this? 
So based on those ingredients, how many s'mores do you think we can make? Well, if you said eight, that would be correct. So we could make eight s'mores. Okay? <clears throat> you want to ask yourself, and you're going to do this in a day or two when we do the real lesson, not the real lesson, but the advanced lesson on limiting reagents. You're going to say, how many s'mores can I make from 16 graham crackers? The answer there is eight. How many s'mores can I make from 11 pieces of chocolate? The answer there is 11. How many s'mores can I make from nine marshmallows? The answer there is nine, assuming everything else is in excess. Well, you look at what is limiting you. Well, based on these ingredients, I can only make eight s'mores. So my graham cracker, in this case, is my limiting reagent. I believe that's a question on your note sheet. So the limiting reagent in the question that we have here is the graham cracker. So to identify what the limiting reagent is, you want to see what is limiting the amount of product you can make. Okay? Um, and then everything else is left in excess. So those are excess reagents. So the last question on your note sheet asks you what is left over and how much. So if we can make eight graham crackers, how many pieces of chocolate should we have left over? Well, we should have three pieces of chocolate left over. And how many marshmallows should we have left over? We should have one marshmallow left in excess. Okay, that's all based on how much we made or how much we used up. Okay, so we're going to go into a couple other examples. Just conceptually like this today, you'll try a couple. You won't be able to do all of the, the pages that I have listed because some of them go into the more advanced limiting reagent problems. But we'll do those hopefully in class uh, when I see you. So, um, in your notes, you should have, uh, I believe you have this example and maybe one more on the next page. So let's take a look at how we do these. Um, some of you may need to write some work down and some of you may not need to. It all depends on your understanding of this. I always like to show my work, at least when I teach it, to show you how these, how these work. Look at the chemical equation you have. Two potassiums plus one iodine molecule produce two moles of potassium iodide, that compound. What you want to do here is think of this chemical reaction as a recipe, just like it was with making s'mores. Okay? If you thought this example was easy, the s'more example, then you're going to think this example is just as easy, if not easier. Okay? But students think this is easy, and then they go here, and they think it's really difficult because I throw chemical equations at you now. Don't don't let that hinder you from understanding what's going on here. Think of it as a recipe, and you're taking your ingredients on the left to produce a product on the right. Um, and sometimes you have ingredients left over, and just like in our s'more example towards the end where we had excess chocolate and excess marshmallows. Let's look at number one. It says in order for four moles of potassium to react, how many moles of iodine do I need? Well, if you look at what we have up here, we have a 2 to 1 ratio between potassium and iodine. Just like we had a different ratio with our s'mores, right? We had two graham crackers for every one piece of chocolate. Same exact thing. So what I like to do is put under, either above or below, it's up to you. I, my recipe calls for two moles of potassium to react with one mole of iodine, but I want four moles of potassium to react. Okay, so I want that coefficient to be a, two, a four. What do I have to do to my entire equation, specifically the iodine, what do I have to do to that then in order to have it completely react with the potassium? Well, it's a 2 to 1 ratio, so this should be multiplied by 2, right? And I should need 2 moles of iodine needed, okay? So I basically doubled this reactant, therefore I doubled this one. If you have a recipe to bake cookies and you want to make twice as many cookies, you're not going to double one of your ingredients. You're going to double all of your ingredients, right? That's the same idea that we have going on here. Okay, so let's go through a couple more. Gets, I mean, it gets a little more difficult than this. Um, next question. To produce eight moles of Ki, blank moles of I2 are needed along with excess potassium. That means we have extra potassium. We're not going to run out. We have potassium galore, all right? I want to make, instead of two moles, I want to make eight. All right, so instead of making, I don't know, um, two cookies in this recipe, I want to make eight cookies. What should I multiply everything by to go from two to eight 
moles of Ki, or from two cookies to eight cookies um, for this example. So if we're focusing on iodine, one mole of iodine makes two moles of potassium iodide. So therefore, here I multiplied by four. Here I need to multiply by four, and I end up with four moles of iodine needed. Okay. Next one. Blank moles of Ki will be produced if six moles of I2, let me put that up here, is combined with two moles of potassium. Okay, now for an example like this, we, we actually do have both of our reactants given to us. So let's see if we could figure out how to, how to do this. Look at your coefficients that are given to you. For this reaction to occur, again, two, two potassiums with one iodine to produce two moles of Ki. Let's just go through the reaction as many times as we can. Okay, so I'm going to go through the reaction one time. Okay. When I go through the reaction one time, I use up two moles of potassium, I use up one mole of iodine, and I produce two moles of potassium iodide. Okay, so the reaction proceeded one time, and that's what I've used up. Let's see what I have left after that happens. I started with two moles of potassium. I used up two right here, the first time I went through the reaction. So right now, I don't have two left, I have none. Look at your iodine. I start with six, I used up one, I have five left, okay? So ask yourself now, can I go through this reaction again? The answer is no, I can't because I'm out of potassium. So the reaction shuts off, okay? The extra iodine, five moles of it, is just sitting there. It's not going to do anything. It can't do anything because there's nothing for it to react with. So to answer the question, we're going to produce two moles of potassium iodide from that setup that we have. If I were to ask you what the limiting reagent is, the limiting reagent is what you run out of first. It limits how much you can make. That's potassium. If I ask what the excess reagent is, that is iodine. That's your excess reagent. And I could ask you how much is in excess, and that would be five moles. Okay, let's go ahead and knock out the last two examples here. Hopefully you're getting the hang of it by now. If not, we'll do a couple more. So the next one, it says blank is the limiting reagent if, if um, six moles of K, so we're going to have six moles of potassium, reacting with four moles of iodine. All right, so let's do what I just did on the last one. Let's go through the reaction a bunch of times. I go through the reaction one time, two moles of potassium is used, one mole of iodine is used, I produce two moles of Ki. What's left? I start with six moles of K, I used up two, I'm down to four. I start with four moles of iodine, I used up one, I'm down to three. Let's see if I can do the reaction again. Looks like I can. I have enough of everything, so I'm going to use up two moles of potassium, one mole of iodine, create another two moles of potassium iodide. So I had four left, I used up another two, down to two moles of potassium left, and I had three moles of iodine, I used up another one, so I'm down to two. Let's see if I can do it again, looks like we can. So I can go, go through the reaction again, I use up two moles of potassium, one mole of iodine, and create another two moles of Ki. I had two, uh, two moles of potassium left. I used up two in this third, third time through the reaction, so there's none left. Iodine, I had two. I used up one more, so there's one left. And potassium, uh, uh, potassium iodide, I, I produced this much. I produced six moles. So the question says, what's the limiting reagent? Limiting reagent is what you write out of first, so clearly that is potassium. Excess reagent is iodine. We have one mole of excess reagent left. All right, let's do the last one, and you guys will try one. All right, last one. It says, blank moles of Ki will be produced when 12 moles of potassium react with 2 moles of iodine to create how much? And it says, blank moles of the excess will be left over. So here we go. Um, again. Third time in a row now we're doing this. Let's go through the reaction. Every time the reaction proceeds, we use up two moles, one mole, 
and create two. Let's see what's left. I start with 12 potassium. I use up two, I'm down to 10. I start with two iodine. I use up one, I'm down to one left. I produced two moles of Ki so far. Do I have enough reactant to go through the reaction again? The answer that's yes. So I go through two, one, create another two. I had 10 moles of K. I use up two more, so I'm down to eight. I had one mole of iodine left. I used it up right here, none left. And I produced another two moles of Ki. So can I go through the reaction again? The answer is no. I don't have any iodine left. I cannot go through. So reaction shuts off, okay? So blank moles of Ki will be produced. The answer to that is four. And how many moles of excess reagent are left? Right there, eight. All right, you guys can set up stoichiometry problems and do these. You're just converting moles to moles, that middle part of your roadmap, that mole roadmap, okay? So you can say, all right, I have 12 moles of K and, and solve for your product, or two moles of I, um, I2 and solve for your product. You can still get it that way. Um, this is just the more conceptual understanding of what is actually going on. All right, here's the last one for today, and then you'll try a couple for homework. Um, Take a look at the chemical reactions, see if you can do them on your own first, and then we'll check them. Okay, guys, so for the first one, <clears throat> it says blank moles of H2 will be made if four moles of H2SO4 react. So I need two moles of H2SO4 to react in this, this recipe, but instead I have four moles of H2SO4. So it looks like I am doubling my recipe here. So assuming I have excess lead four hydroxide, um, if I'm doubling my reactant H2SO4, I would double my um, product. So I double that, I get 8. Okay, 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, next one. Blank moles of H2SO4 is needed to make 2 moles of water. So don't be tricked by this. <clears throat> this recipe, as written, creates 4 moles of water. I want to create 2 moles of water. So instead of baking, I don't know, a dozen cookies, I only want half a dozen. Okay, I'm watching what I eat, I guess. So in this case, you're doing the same thing. The recipe, as written, makes four moles of water. I only want to make half of that, so I would take my ingredients and cut them in half. Okay. If I want to make six cookies instead of 12 cookies, I use half of the ingredients. Right. So how many moles of H2SO4 are needed? Half of two is one. Um, if I said, if, if this is important, if this question said, how many moles of PbOH4 is needed to make two moles of water? So again, I want to cut this in half. So I'd cut this in half. It would be one half a mole of PbOH4. That's allowed. You could have half moles or quarter moles or stuff like that. Right? It's, it's, it's fine. Um, there's a couple I got in your homework. I want to make sure I, I mention that. All right, number three. How many moles of H2O is produced if four moles of H2SO4 combine with four moles of PbOH4? Okay, so here's a limiting reagent problem. I have my reaction proceeding. I use two, one. I create one and four. Looks like I had four moles. I used up two. I have two left. I had four moles of PbOH4. I used up one. I have three left. I can go through the reaction again. Looks like I have enough stuff. Now I'm down to zero, sulfuric acid. I'm down to two, lead four hydroxides. Um, how much water is produced? Looks like eight moles. Okay, the last one. So number four, it says um, blank moles of lead four hydroxide is left over if six moles of sulfuric acid combine with five of lead 4 hydroxide. So it's already telling us that the PbOH4 is left over. That's our excess. Okay. Um, so go through the reaction. Go through it once. We have 2, 1. And who cares about the products? Not asking us about those. Looks like I have 3. Oops, that's a lie. I have 4. I, I could do math. I have 4 moles sulfuric acid left and 4 moles of lead 4 hydroxide. Go through the reaction again. I'm down to 2 and three, go through the reaction again, and I'm zero, 
that's why this is my lending reagent. And then I, one, two, three, so that's down to two. Looks like I have two moles of lead four hydroxide left in excess. All right, guys, that is how you do the first part of it. So of course it gets a little more difficult from here, but um, as you're looking at these, hopefully you could get the conceptual understanding un understood and have that down. And I think that's the important part for today. So think of it as a recipe and, and your ingredients used to make something. And you know what are you doing to your either your ingredients or your product? Are you doubling it? Are you tripling it? Are you cutting it in half? Um, and whatever you do to one, you should like your products or your reactants. You should do the other. So for your living reagent homework, there is more to it, like I already said. But numbers one through nine, uh, you should be able to do now. Okay, and it's just literally exactly like the examples here. All right, so use these to help you. We can talk about them in class if you're stuck but you should be able to get most of them. Um, and after the next lesson, you'll be able to work on the rest of them. All right, so for now, just worry about one through nine on the next um, page or two, and we'll talk about the rest when we get back in class. All right, thanks, guys.